Okay, welcome to our irrigation installation. It's really windy today. I've done a couple of test videos and the sound seems to be okay with the uh, wind blowing. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, hopefully it won't be too bad. And so this is why one of the main reasons why we did our uh, underground water and spigot system that we did a few weeks ago. Basically, uh, this is what they call a drip emitter or drip tape system. Uh, what I'm doing is that I'm just showing video right now of the different components. I'll go into those a little bit, uh, but this is not going to be an installation video per se uh, on a step by step basis. Um, we got all of this at Drip Depot, which is dripdepot.com. Uh, they have very good videos. Uh, the video and the system that we are emulating from is called the Small Farm System. Uh, and we use, there's four different small farm kits you can get. We based ours off of the Ultimate Kit. Uh, one of the good, good things about Drip Depot is that you can pick one of their kits, which is like a stock kit, but then you can very easily customize it because, for instance, on their kit, the, the drip tape itself, which is what you're seeing right here, is 12-inch spacing. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, because we have sandy soil... Uh, the water goes down faster, so we need them closer together. So we got six inch spacing So speaking of the drip tape, this is the drip tape itself uh, This is this is flat when it when it does not have water and When it does have water it will round up and just look like a regular tube. Oh I see Andrea found our pipe cutter, so that's good so it was evidently in the house when I thought it was out in the shed because I was trying to find it earlier. But anyway, uh, where my thumb is right here, this is the emitter itself. If you can see, there's a little hole right there. And so this particular emitter is rated at 0.25 gallons per hour, which means that it will drip out a quarter of a gallon per hour. And then the one next to it will drip out a quarter of a gallon and so on and so forth. If you have different type of soil, you will want your spacing and your gallons per hour to be different. Sandy soil, the water goes down really quick, so you want them closer. If you had like clay soil, for instance, the water does not go down quick at all. Uh, it will pool more on the surface, so you would want them further apart. And so this is what we're doing. The other good thing is both our garlic, which is right here, and our onions, which is right there, those are at six inch spacing. So I don't think we're gonna get the emitters right on the six inches and be right next to them, but the fact that they're both six inch spacing is good. And as you can see, our rows are a weed covered mess right now. Um, Cause the next step after we get this done is we're gonna put straw down to try to do uh, water retention and weed control because it rained almost an inch two days ago and the top of this is already dry now to do prep work you need to have what we call mainline tubing which I'm walking over to here right now what you're seeing is my little bridge that I created Andrea wanted to have a way for water to go from one side to the other so it wouldn't pond up. So we bought just regular four inch uh, drainage pipe and I cut them at two foot increments and so that's what that is. So if we get a really bad monsoon it won't uh, pond up on the back side here because on the this side here is uh, higher than this side. Uh, it looks flat, but there's probably about 10 to 12 inch drop between the top of the row and the bottom of the row. So here is our mainline tubing. Most of the tubing that you will get will be black. Uh, we opted to get the white tubing 
because uh, we live in Horry County, South Carolina. That's the same county as Myrtle Beach. And we have a very hot, humid summer here. And we were afraid that the black tubing would uh, uh, disintegrate and break down quicker. So this tubing here has uh, UV coating on it. And so that's what we're going to be using. And then our components here, I'll go through these really quick. Uh, like I said, the drip, the drip depot video, uh, there's a really good video on the installation of all this. So they can do it a lot better than me. And yes, the wind is really coming. But here's the timer that we have. Ironically, this is the same timer that they have on the installation video. I'm actually going to put that out of the sun. I'll put that over here. Uh, that timer is what they call a digital timer, which means you can set uh, several different watering sessions. You can do it on different days of the week. Uh, it's a what they call a two-zone system. Uh, so you can uh, be able to uh, do each uh, two different zones and have them water at two different times or two different days of the week. Uh, they can ha they have this up to from a single up to a four zone system uh, They have a lot of different type of timers There's manual timers where you have to physically come out here turn them on and off There's timers that you can use from your phone either via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi uh, We elected to go with the straight digital timer uh, because um, there were too many bad reviews of people not being able to connect it via Wi-Fi and uh, they don't have a digital display like that. And so I was concerned that something would happen and we couldn't be able to connect to it. So we're just going to go old fashioned. So that's the timer. Uh, these things here, these are uh, what they call backflow preventers. Uh, what a backflow preventer does is that if you have water go down your line into your irrigation system and something happens, water will not go back up into your water system. Uh, pretty much all houses, all commercial buildings and all that have backflow preventers on them. That's to keep water pressure only going one way. So you don't contaminate your water system. So that's what these are and these are made out of brass they also have some made out of plastic this is a pressure regulator and of course there we go so what this does this reduces the water pressure to 15 psi maximum and the reason is the drip tape system is designed for low pressure it's not designed for high pressure so if you didn't have that pressure regulator on there it would blow out your system and then you have this is a filter which does fine particles we're on a well system and so we should be okay but we have the filter there just in case then you have uh, stakes that go in the ground uh, those things are what you call goof plugs. Uh, that's if you make an oopsie. Uh, you can be able to you can be able to repair it without uh, replacing the segment. Uh, this thing here, this this actually punctures uh, from your tubing to your drip tape connector because uh, that's how you actually connect the two. And that's what these are here. These actually will, uh, they go from the tubing, which I don't know if you can see it. That's the small side right there. And then the big side is what connects to the actual drip tank. Uh, there's a lot of different type of systems. Uh, this is the system that uh, we wanted to use. Then you have your end caps, which are right here. And then these are joiners. So if you have two pieces of your tubing, then uh, you can be able to uh, connect them together. Uh, so if you wanted to extend your line or if you made an oopsie or something, then you can be able to do that. And then these are 90 degree angles. 
and so because what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of sharp angles so i got a few of these and i think that's about it um now they said on the video that all you need is a pair of scissors to cut this stuff so it's not like you have to have special equipment um we got a pipe cutter because i'll see if i can cut the tubing with a pipe cutter instead of scissors and then the drip tape uh we'll probably just use the scissors on that so anyway that's the that's the preliminary of the system itself let me get up and go here and so what we're going to do is how you determine your system is you get your water source and you have a five gallon bucket and you time how long it takes to fill up that five gallon bucket and so in this particular instance it took us 18 seconds to fill up a five gallon bucket right here and so if you multiply that out that came out to about 950 gallons per hour so that is the maximum amount of water flow that can go through that spigot right there so what you want is you want your zones to be less than your capability because otherwise you won't have enough water and we wanted it to be a lot less because uh, it's running off of the same well that's running our house and Andrea's mother's house. So when the irrigation system was on, we didn't want to lose pressure in the house. So we're splitting it into two zones. Each zone is going to be about 460 plus or minus gallons per hour, which is going to be well below its capability, which is good. And for the first six rows, we're going to do two pieces of tape, one on each side over here. And so the first six rows is going to be one zone. And then the second zone is going to be rows seven, eight, and nine are going to be double. And then rows 10 through 14 or 10 through 15 is going to be a single row. Hold on a second. Sorry, a piece of plastic escaped, so I had to go chase it down. And so that's what we're hoping to accomplish with all this. And hopefully we can have this done. It didn't look like it's too complicated to do this drip tape system. It's more tedious than it is complicated. So it's probably going to take a lot of time, but it's not like rocket science. So anyway... I think that's me dumb rambling about the uh, preliminary stuff. Uh, we'll come back when I got some of it put together. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do with the uh, tubing here is I wanted the tubing to be underground a little bit from here over to the where the garden starts. And the reason for that is I wanted to have, wanted to be able to run over it with the lawnmower easily and not every single time I run over it with the lawnmower I'm worried I'm going to break the tubing so we're going to recess the tubing into the ground just a little bit so that's the theory at least we shall see how that's going to happen so I'm going to shut up now and we're actually going to start installing this thing okay the tubing portion is completed so as you can see, we have a Y connection here, then we have our timer, and then below the timer, we have the backflow preventer, the filter, the pressure regulator, and then the connector to the tubing. Then I wanted to have a 90 degree angle here since I knew that was going to happen. So that was a good idea. And then I was going to do a video showing the little trench that we did, but Andrea and I got into a groove and then this happened. So um, basically the trench is only a few inches deep. I just wanted it deep enough so when I go over it with the lawnmower, I don't accidentally hit the tubing. But zone one is over here. It's going to cover these six beds. So I have a 90 degree angle here. 
Then you see here, these are staples, but in, like unlike normal lawn staples, those are actually rounded and it's rounded for this particular purpose for the tubing. Then you come down here, then you have the end. Uh, we have Ant Nation right there. So uh, I'm gonna have to fight with the ants when we get to that point. Then over on the other side, it's the same thing in reverse. Uh, we decided that we're going to stop it right here. And then when we get the rest of our garden uh, ready to be planted, which will be in a few weeks, uh, we'll just put an extender uh, plug right there. We'll take out that uh, end plug and put in an extender. Uh, we got, a f uh, they recommended a few anyway, so we got a couple of them and uh, for this type of situation, so that'll be good. Uh, just as a uh, little note, uh, a couple things. Uh, we, we were finally able to hill the potatoes. So while I was monkeying around setting everything up earlier, Andre is actually doing the hilling. So that's what the potatoes look like right now. That one potato, which is one of the purple ones, is actually flowering. So that's how good the potatoes are growing as of right now. Then uh, we got our beets right here. Um, but the other thing I wanted to show is I've been weeding the best I could inside of these rows. And as you can tell, the weeds are winning the war a lot. But this is the 11th row. Uh, when we went and did the beds earlier this year, we did not know if we were going to use this row or not. So we had it, so we might as well make it. This has not been weeded at all. So this is what the row would look like if it had not been weeded at all. And so the other rows, I mean, they look okay, but, you know, they're not good by any stretch of the imagination. So that's what the uh, straw is going to be for. So Andrea is down there. Um, the row that's on her left, which would be on our right side, is where the carrots are so she's pointing at the carrots right now so a decent bit of the carrots came up i actually weeded that row the other day before it rained uh, the only thing that's not really come up has been the cabbage and uh, a lot of the corms uh, so like here's the texas corms right there so they're popping up slowly but surely but uh, there's not a lot of them that have come up and the uh, ones that my aunt gave me, uh, that's even less. But considering what they are, those take a long time. Uh, the other garlic obviously is doing well. That's rows one and three. So anyway, this is not a garden update video. I just wanted to show this is the reason why we're doing all of this. And so what we're going to do within the next week or so is we're going to retail all of this. And this is where our uh, rest of the garden is going to go. Uh, we're going to have a big old swath area for the melons. They're not going to be in rows, but everything else is going to be in rows. And then uh, hopefully we'll be done adding for the garden for right now. But it looks like uh, everything's going to go well. And this is, except for maybe one or two times, all of this has been nature watered. So we have not watered any of this, except for when we first planted, we watered it a little bit. But other than that, this has all been by nature. So when we can get a consistent water source on this, it should, and put fertilizer on it, which the fertilizer is gonna be blood meal. But by doing both of that, we should be able to expedite the growth of everything. Then uh, we can worry about uh, the next step, which will be harvesting all of this stuff, but that's a future us problem. So we're going to go in, take a break for a while. Then uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to puncture the mainline tubing to get the connectors for the drip tape in. And then the final step is going to be the drip tape itself. And then hopefully we can be able to test it and it's actually going to work. So we're going to be fingers crossed on that.
Okay, zone one is done. We flushed the main line. Uh, we had a fight with the ants, and the ants won. Uh, they got me a few times. So, uh, one fun fact if you get stung by an ant, then uh, put your hand in uh, vinegar, uh, apple cider vinegar and it'll help neutralize the sting because the sting is very acidic and of course vinegar or the sting is alkaline the vinegar is acidic so it helps neutralize it so i did that for a little while then my hand was fine uh, we're running a field test right now so here's the connection from the main line to the emitter system as you can see here let me come to this one here you can see it actually dripping. Each one of these will drip a quarter of a gallon per hour. And so the entire system right now on zone one is about 460, 480 gallons an hour. And it's running fine. Um, you can see here, you can see where they're actually dripping right there. So what we're going to do is I'm letting this run for 10 minutes as a field test. Uh, everything looks like it's doing well. We did have one of these pieces that uh, malfunctioned. And so we, we had to replace it. Uh, you can see like this one here it's dripping a little bit, but it's not affecting the system itself. So, except for the first row where we had our little ant battle, all of these went fairly well. As you can see, we stuck them on the insides, and you can see where the water is actually dripping on all of these. Now, we're normally going to be running this in the morning, not in the afternoon, but it's about 5 o'clock right now. And so we just, I just wanted to run a little field test to see how this was going to work. And this is a corm row right here that only has a few corms actually growing in it. So you can see here, you know, what this looks like. You can see how it's actually running. And so this is what we wanted to get a more consistent flow of water. So let me go down the row here and see if it looks like this all the way down, which it looks like it does. Now, on these particular rows, the bottom part here is lower in elevation than the top. So this ambient wise has more moisture to it. So if some of the drip emitters don't actually work as well here, that's not the worst thing in the world, but it looks, even on row one, it took it probably about a full minute or so to actually uh, charge up the entire system because we have 12 rows that are 77 feet long each, plus or minus. And so it took about a minute or so to actually do that. But even down here at the very end, uh, these are working well because you can see uh, the little pools of water. And so what we're thinking is while these are exposed before we get the um, before we get the um, not hay the straw you know, on here um, I think I'm going to run these 30 minutes at a time for three days out of the week. Uh, the good thing with our particular um, timer that we have, we can, we can program it that way. We can program multiple days. And we've also been going through and finding that. There we go. So we can keep the leaves above the emitter system and not below it. Now we can also have these these can actually go below ground if you want to well we have sandy soil here so we don't need to do that but uh, like for the potatoes over there that's probably going to get semi-buried 
because uh, the potatoes, even without the extra water, are going absolutely gangbusters. Um, so I'm really happy about that. And all the beets are doing really well too. And see, all of this was done without the emitter system. And it's a good thing we got it when we did because uh, there's no rain in the forecast for the foreseeable future. Now that doesn't mean that we won't get a pop-up shower or something, but there's nothing that the weather gods are saying that it's gonna rain in the next week or so. So let's see how much longer this has. Oh, it looks like it just stopped. So there it is, it's one minute left. Here, let me cockeye it, there we go. We have it at an angle, so. Uh, So it has the little symbol thing. This was a manual one. This wasn't a timed one. Uh, I'll probably do the time thing starting tomorrow. And you can see where it says zone one right there. And so, but uh, all of this stuff worked good. Oh, now it just shut off. So now the uh, timer itself is rated for constant pressure and everything beyond the timer is not rated for constant pressure that's why you have to have um, more than one get up that's why you just can't have one set of these and have it up here um, these are not all that expensive so it's not like it was several hundred dollars to get the filter and the backflow preventer and all that stuff then um, this is where this is going to get left open pretty much from now till the end of summer uh, when we don't need it anymore. Um, I contacted the manufacturer and asked them to make sure that that was going to be the case and they said that people do it all the time and as long as it's not freezing weather then um, that's what that's designed for. So I'm like yay. So, so this is half of our system. Uh, the other half we're going to do tomorrow because this isn't hard. You know, it's not rocket science. It's just tedious. And so just with 10 minutes, this is what the soil looks like after 10 minutes. So it's not, we're not getting big swaths of dirt to get moisture, but I don't really want big swaths of dirt. I want right where the plants are and since the plant spacings are all six inches for the most part and the emitter spacings are all six inches if this ran for a full 30 minutes then it would cover all of this and then the roots would get all the nourishment that they need so i'm really happy about this if i'm not lazy i will post this part tonight um I have the multiple segments, so we'll just see how it goes. If not, then this I'll just tag the rest of it on here. So the first field test was good. Uh, very little issues with it. And except for it being tedious, this was not that complicated to do. Okay, it is the next morning. And no, I did not obviously post... The other part of the video so this is going to get tacked on to it and i did a full 30 minute uh cycle so i it started around 7 30 it's about eight o'clock right now and i think it finished like a minute or two before i got outside so i wanted to see what this looked like uh we did have heavy dew last night so the ground looks a little wetter than normal um going down row number one right now which is elephant garlic and as you can tell even before we got the irrigation system the elephant garlic looks like it's loving life right now and so you come to the end here and then um these are the spanish onions which are the long day onions which are not technically supposed to grow here. This was Andrea's Oopsie Onions, as in she accidentally ordered the wrong kind. Uh, but we put them in the ground anyway, and we're going to see if they're going to grow. They look like they're growing, so there's that. But 
yeah here is everything um i looked at it this morning before it was done or when it just started and every single line it takes about a minute or two to charge up the entire line uh, let's go down this row here these are our embattled leaks right here and not only are they fighting the environment they're also fighting a bunch of weeds too so weeds are next on the agenda so hopefully they can get evicted and so yeah just running up and down a couple of the aisles here and okay you can definitely see where the water is going oh uh, in case anybody was curious we put this trench down in the center on purpose because when we got the onions the directions for the onions said that you wanted a four inch four inch wide four inch deep trench in the center put your fertilizer and stuff then you put the onions about five or six inches away from it on each side so that's how come we ended up with it looking like this well come to find out uh, you can inject fertilizer into the irrigation system so we don't have to do it um, down the center here so we're going to take out that center piece when we go to do the other part over here. And we'll only put it in if we have something that we need to mound up like the potatoes over there. Because for the potatoes it was really good because all we had to do was I just had to enlarge the trench that was there. And so I just mounded it up on both sides and then stuck the potatoes down. And so anyway done rambling. I think this worked very well. Uh, we had this in its actual position all night, which means that the Iowa spigot was in its on position, just like it is right now. And nothing has leaked. And this we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to come up with some contraption uh, because they said uh, the timer needs to be shaded. So the timer and the um, and our fertilizer is uh, I'm gonna figure out some contraption in order to have that so it can be shaded but that's a future me problem. Uh, I'll work on that in about a week or so. But anyway done rambling. I think this all worked out very well. Andre and I are going to do the other part of this today so we can have both zones up and running. Then once we field test zone two, then I'll come in and actually set the timers. Right now I'm thinking three days a week, 30 minutes at a time, at least until we get the straw on, then we I might drop it from there. Uh, the problem is with the sun and with this being sand, it dries out very, very easily. So I figure putting a little bit of more water is not going to hurt anything. Plus, the other good thing about the sandy soil is the sand, uh, you know, is more porous than other types of soils. So it drains very good, too. Uh, the ants figured that out, unfortunately. So we're going to have to have a continued war with them. But anyway, I call that good. Andre and I are going to get the rest of this done today. Then the irrigation system will be done. Okay, zone two is complete, or at least what we have now, the stuff we have that we're growing inside, like cucumbers and squash and tomatoes and stuff, that's going over here, which we'll get in the next few weeks, which will also be on zone two. But as you can see, this is working. We're doing our 10 minute field test right now. And so, the only real issue we have is this right here, but it's not affecting the system. 
and that's at the connection between the mainline tube and the uh, connector to the actual drip tape. Uh, what we did over here is where the potatoes are, as you can see, we kind of half buried the drip tape and here's a good spot right there you can see it's actually working you can bury this and uh, there's some applications where it's better to bury them than it is to leave them on the surface so um, this will be good I wanted to make sure that when this expanded and pressurized whether it was going to move the tape or not, which it doesn't look like it is, because we tried to bury it a little bit. And hopefully if we, keep, if we can keep the um, dirt moist, um, the sandy dirt is just so loosey-goosey when it's dry. But all you have to do is have a, bit, a little bit of moisture in it, and it can actually retain itself. It's... Not like concrete, but it can form itself up pretty good. So that's what we're hoping for. But everything we've done to date has been without the irrigation system. It's just been with nature. So there was an area here. It looks like it's working good. They said do not put these uh, lawn staples down where the drip tape is and have them down because when it pressurizes up it'll mess them up uh, unfortunately we had to there's like a couple of severe turns right here and if we left it to its own devices uh, the drip tape would fall off and go into the in-between area so we stuck a couple of staples down and left them up so it's not impeding the drip tape at all, as you can see here. So that looks like it's going to work good. Uh, we'll come back and check. And we do have, when I ran this this morning, all of the drip tape lines were taut. But it's getting warmer now. And so then now expansion is happening. So I'll do some more research on that, on whether it's normal and you just don't worry about it, or whether we'll need to put lawn staples every so often. Once we get the straw down and uh, the tape will be in the shade, then it should have less of an issue with that. But I'll do some research to that. But it looks like this is going good. And you can see... On zone one here because it's about 11 o'clock right now I ran this from about 7 30 to 8 o'clock this morning and you can see how moist the dirt is compared to the area here that's not moist so by running this 30 minutes it got pretty much the entire center of this to be moist dirt which uh, is what we're wanting because what will what will happen is the the down part down there towards the trees that will retain a lot more moisture than up here. This will be like Sahara Desert, and that'll still be moist down there. And this will of course should hopefully even it out. And the good thing is the higher pressure is here, so if there's any loss of pressure that'll happen, it'll happen down on the end, which I don't think it will. But if it does. And we lose a little pressure on the bottom side that's not the worst thing in the world because that will always have more ambient moisture than it will up here so i call this a success and so now we get to start the final step which is doing a final clean house weeding and putting straw down which will be done in an increment basis because as you can tell the weeds have almost completely overrun everything but hopefully the straw should help with that. So drip tape system so far, uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. Oh, I forgot to mention without the um, fertilizer um, containers, which I'll do a separate video on that because I wanted to get the system up and running before we started messing 
with the fertilizer system. Um, without the fertilizer system, and that included the timer, the total was about $580, and that was for everything that included... That's basically, that was taking the Small Farm Ultimate from Drip Depot and modifying it because, uh, you know, they had emitters at 12 inches and I wanted them at 6, so I had to change those out. And they used the black tubing and we wanted to use the white tubing because in South Carolina we get pretty extreme hot weather and we wanted a little better protection on the tubing. But other than that, everything else on the system... Uh, we pretty much left. So it's the same backflow preventers, same filters, same pressure regulators, all of that. So that was, uh, by the time we got done with it, it was about $580. Not including tax. Not including tax. Uh, also, I can't remember if I said it before, but with Drip Depot, if you have an agricultural extension, uh, exemption card, uh, in South Carolina it's called SCATE. Uh, I don't know what it would be in other states, but you just give them your information and they will tag your account to be tax free. So every time you use that particular email, it will be non-taxed. And um, the fertilization system was a little less than 200, it was about $160, $170 for that, uh, for both of those. And so we saved, I think, between $70 and $80 in tax uh, by doing that. So, you know, every little bit helps. So it looks like the system is off. Yep. And so I guess I've been yakking long enough that the system actually shut off. So that was our 10-minute stress test. Uh, everything looks good. So... Now I can start playing with uh, actually setting up the programming. So, all right, done yakking for real this time. Uh, this has been the drip system and so far it's been a success.